friends, welcome to our fourth presentation in the series War in Heaven. In this occasion, the topic of our presentation, the name of our presentation is going to be Clean the House. And by God's grace, we want to study from the Bible and see that this is the time when we need to put the commandments of men, the words of men aside and live only according to the commandments and the words of Jesus Christ. So our message in this occasion is entitled, Clean the House. As we are going to open the Bible, we want first of all to pray to the Lord that he may guide us with his Holy Spirit right now when we are going to open his holy word. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we are asking in the name of Jesus Christ that you may guide us with the Holy Spirit to understand the scriptures, especially in these last days when we live. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our message, clean the house. So I invite you to open the Bible in the book of Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, and we want to read a parable that Jesus Christ spoke, and it, this parable is having a special meaning for us, those that are living in these last days. Luke chapter 15, and we want to read starting at verse 8 and verse 9. The Bible is saying, Either what woman having ten pieces of silver if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Now, most of the times when we are reading this parable, we are thinking that that piece of silver that was lost only symbolized the souls that have been lost by sin. And we know that there is great joy in heaven when every son that was a sinner is coming back to the Lord by repentance, confessing their sins. Look what the Bible is saying in Luke chapter 15, verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. But we want to go deeper in this parable that we have read together from the Bible. Our message entitled, Clean the House. There is a very important principle when we are studying the parables of Jesus. And one of the things that we need to consider is that some of the parables of Jesus Christ, they have a prophetic understanding. They have a prophetic meaning, especially for us that are living in these last days. Let me sh show you from the Bible that Jesus Christ, when he spoke parables, often he used in the parables symbols. Because these parables, they were having a deeper meaning than that one from the surface. Let's read together from Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, and we want to read here about the parable of the seed and the sower. Matthew chapter 13, let's read together starting at verse 1. The Bible is saying, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So Jesus was addressing to the people, he was speaking many times, beautiful lessons about salvation and the kingdom of God using parables. But after he was speaking parables, most of the times Jesus 
is speaking about the deeper things. He is starting decoding the symbols that he was using in these parables. As you see, starting at verse 18, Matthew chapter 13, verse 18, the Bible is saying, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. So what I'm trying to say at the beginning of Bible study in this occasion is that when Jesus was using parables, he was using symbols to speak about the kingdom of God, to speak about the things of salvation, even our salvation. Now, the same thing is with also with Bible prophecy. Do you know, according to the Bible, when Jesus addressed to his prophets, he used symbols, even parables, to describe the things that will happen in the future. Let me show you this and prove it from the Bible because the Bible is going to be our main textbook. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Hosea, chapter 12, and we want to read from there, verse 12. You'll see that the Bible is speaking about prophecies as being as parables. Hosea. We have the book of Daniel, then the book of Hosea, and we want to read from there, verse 10. Listen what the Bible is saying here. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and now listen, used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So God is using symbols. He is using parables. He is using a coded message given to the prophets, and these are the prophets, prophecies that we need to understand in these last days. So what I'm trying to lay as a foundation now at our Bible study with the title Clean the House is that many of the parables of Jesus Christ, they have a prophetic application if we are studying deeper the word of the living God. Now, with this thing established in our minds, we want to go back in the book of Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 8, and we want to decode this Bible prophecy, this parable that we found in Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 8. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house. From here we have the title of our presentation, Clean the House or Sweep the House, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Now, the first thing that we want to decode from the Bible and see exactly what these words, these symbols symbolize, we need to use the Bible. Let's ask ourselves, what is a woman a symbol in Bible prophecy? According to the Bible, a woman in Bible prophecy symbolizes a church. Let's read together from the Bible. We'll go and open our Bibles in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, and we want to read from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, and we want to read from here verse 25, then verse 31 and 32. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible says here, starting at verse 25, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you see, there is a parallel between Christ as a husband and the wife, the woman, symbolizing God's 
church. Look again at this parallel starting at verse 31. The Bible is saying, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So this unity between a man and a woman symbolizes the unity that Christ wants to have with his church. So a woman in Bible prophecy symbolizes a church. Now, let's confirm again with another witness from the Bible. Let's go together in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and we want to read starting at verse 2. And I really want you, my friends, to take notes. Take notes, have a pen and a paper. Open your Bible because we need to understand the things in which we put our belief. We are living in these last days and our only trust is in the Bible, which is the inspired word of the living God. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, the second witness. The Bible is saying, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to be one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So Paul here is speaking about this company of believers, the church of God, being represented as a chaste virgin, a pure woman. Now we are going back to our main text that is found in Luke chapter 15, verse 10. Where the Bible is saying that a woman, that means a church, was having at the beginning ten pieces of silver but lost one. Now, let's ask ourselves, what is a silver, a symbol in Bible prophecy? Because the Bible is saying that this woman, this church, was having at the beginning ten pieces of silver. Let's read the Bible. Let's go together in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 12, and we want to read starting at verse 6. Psalms chapter 12, we want to know what silver is a symbol in the Bible. And we want to make an application in our Bible study today. Listen what the Bible is saying here in the book of Psalms, chapter 12, and we want to read starting at verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. So you see, according to this Bible passage, we see that the words of God, even the pure words of God, they are symbolized with silver. This woman was having at the beginning ten pieces of silver. This church was having at the beginning ten words, pure words, that were coming straight from the Lord, straight from God. Now let me ask you, can we ask ourselves and see what ten words, even pure words, that were coming straight from the mouth of God have been given by God to His church at the beginning, right from the beginning? Yes, my friends, we are speaking about the ten commandments. Do you know that according to the book of Exodus, chapter 20, starting at verse 1, when we are reading about the Ten Commandments, in reality, God was speaking His pure words. Listen what the Bible is saying there. Exodus chapter 20, our message, clean the house. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Exodus chapter 20, and we want to read from verse 1. The Bible is saying, and God spake all these words saying. And then we read about the Ten Commandments. But these Ten Commandments 
are the pure words, even the words of God. Let me show you and prove again from the Bible that the words of God, the commandments of God, are being represented in the Bible as silver. Go with me in the book of Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. And remember, this woman, even this church at the beginning, she was having 10 pieces of silver. Silver in the Bible is representing also the pure words of God. 10 pieces of silver, 10 words from God. These are the 10 commandments that the church of God was having at the beginning. Look with me in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2, and we want to read together starting at verse 1. Our message is entitled, Clean the House. The Bible is saying here, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Now, listen what the Bible is saying in verse, in verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver and search it for her as for hid treasure. So again, the words of God, even the commandments of God, they are being represented with silver. Let's read another Bible passage to confirm again that the commandments of God are more precious than gold or even silver. Psalms 119. 119. And we want to read together verse 72. Listen what the Bible is saying here. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. So we want to make a short overview of what we have studied. Remember, Christ's parables are also prophecies. They are having deeper application, especially for this time in which we live. These parables that Jesus spoke again and again, they have been spoken in symbols. According to Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10, when Jesus Christ spoke to his prophets, he also used parables, coded messages, symbols that we need to understand only using the, the message, the words from the Bible. We explain Bible prophecy not using our thoughts, not using our words, but we are using only a thus says the Lord, even the words of God. Now, in our parable from Luke chapter 15, verse 8, the Bible is saying that a woman, a woman in the Bible is symbolizing a church. This woman was having at the beginning 10 pieces of silver. Silver in the Bible represent the words of God, the commandments of God. Now, what 10 words, 10 commandments have been given by God to his church? This is his law, even the 10 commandments. But now what happened in that parable? The Bible is saying that the woman lost one of those pieces of silver. That means that we will see that one of the commandments of God shall be forgotten, shall be put aside, especially as we are living in these last days. Maybe you are asking yourself, what is that commandment that even God tells us from the beginning that we should not forget, lose sight of it? Yes, my friends, this is the fourth commandment. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Exodus chapter 20, and we want to read from there, starting at verse 8. Let's see which of the Ten Commandments God especially underlined and starts saying in that commandment, remember, do not forget, do not lose this most important commandment. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Exodus. Our message Clean the house. And indeed, my friends, 
this is the time when we need to clean our house. We need to clean our minds. We need to clean our families. We need to clean our churches from everything that is not Bible-based. Listen what the Bible is saying in Exodus chapter 20, and we want to read from here, starting at verse 8. Listen how he's starting this commandment, even the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So let me ask you why God did start this commandment with the word remember. Why? It is very important because God understood that this commandment would be under attack. This commandment, the devil will attack it again and again to put aside the most important fact that true worship has to be given only to God the Creator. Now, many of the people, they look at this Bible passage and say that the fourth commandment especially, that is speaking about the holy day of rest, even the Sabbath of the Lord, has been given to the Jews at Mount Sinai. No, my friends, listen how, how this commandment is continuing. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy manservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in within thy gates. Now, listen where God is trying to put our minds back, not here at the Mount of Sinai, but back at the creation. Listen what Bible is saying, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Sabbath day, this day of rest, even the seventh, the seventh day, was given by God even at the beginning at the creation. The Sabbath, this seventh day of rest, was a memorial of God's creative power. Listen what the Bible is saying in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 1. The Bible is saying, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he he had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, it is very important that we may understand here a, a, a most important principle. My friends, remember, according to the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible is saying that God created man in the sixth day. God has rested and blessed the seventh day. Now, when we look further into the Bible, we see that in the book of Genesis chapter 1, it was the third day when God created the trees. Very important. You can, you can underline this thing because it's very important. God created the trees in the third day, even the tree of life and even the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, if God created man in the sixth day and he created the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in the third day, that means that prior to the creation of men, evil was already present in this universe. 
And we know that evil and sin, rebellion, was already taking place in heaven by the arch deceiver that was Satan. Now, do you remember from our previous study what was the objective of Lucifer in heaven at the beginning? His objective was to receive the worship according to Isaiah chapter 14, starting at verse 12 to 14 especially, what the Bible is saying that he was trying to receive the worship that is belonging to the Most High God. But who is the Most High God according to the Bible? We have studied together in the book of Genesis chapter 14, starting at verse 18, 19, 22, the Bible is saying that the Most High God is God the Creator. So the beginning, when this great controversy started, when the first war in heaven started, Satan's objective, Lucifer's objective, was to take that worship that is belonging only to the true God, even God the Creator. Now, if the tree of knowledge or good and evil was being made, created in the third day, and man was created in the sixth day, that means, my friends, that God has given the Sabbath day of rest, the seventh day that he blessed as a memorial of creation. He, he gave the Sabbath as a tool of protection for man to not be deceived by this deceiver, Lucifer, who was trying to bring angels and now even men under his captivity that he may receive that worship that was belonging only to the true God, God the Creator. Now do you see why God started in the fourth commandment with the word remember? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Don't forget about this memorial of creation. Don't forget that the battle is over creation. Don't forget that the battle is over worship. Who will receive worship? The creature or the God, the creator? But the Bible is saying that the woman that had at the beginning 10 pieces of silver, even the 10 commandments have lost one of them. And I want you to tell you, my friends, that this fourth commandment is almost forgotten into the entire world. People, they don't obey the fourth commandment. People, they have forgotten that this commandment has not been given to the Jews. This commandment has been given only by God in the beginning. This commandment that is saying that true worship has to be given only to God the Creator. Do you know, if you remove the fourth commandment from the Ten Commandments, you don't know who is speaking in that passage. If you remove the seal of God, where you can see that the one that is telling you not to kill is the one that created life. How can you take life if you are not the one that gave life? How can you steal if you know that there is a God that is able to create all things from nothing? If you remove the fourth commandment, you don't know who is this God that is saying to you, thou shall not lie, thou shall not kill, thou shall not bear false witness, thou shall not covet. We need to understand this most important principle. Now, remember what we have studied so far. Go with me again in the book of Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 Listen what the Bible is saying here. Luke chapter 15, and we want to read together from verse 8 and 9. The Bible is saying, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. Now, Let's look carefully and see what are the steps that this woman, she is making to find again 
this piece of silver that was lost, even the fourth commandment that was lost. First of all, the Bible is saying that she, she light a candle. First thing that you and I, we need to do to understand why the majority of the world is not keeping the fourth commandment and break the fourth commandment, not understanding that we need to worship only to the true God, even God the Creator, we need to open our lights. We need to light our candles. Let's ask ourselves, if we open a light, what does it mean this in the Bible? First of all, if we want to open the light, light a candle, we need to go to Jesus. We need to start praying, spend time with Jesus, because according to the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, the Bible is saying that Jesus is the light of the world from the beginning. Let's read together, because we need to, to, to see if what the preacher is saying is the truth. Don't trust me, my friends. Look at your Bible. Search the Bible and see with your own eyes that what we are studying in this occasion is Bible-based. Amen? John chapter 8, we want to read from verse 12. Remember, the woman light a candle. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So who is the light of life? is Jesus. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to spend more time with Jesus. We need to spend more time in prayer. As, as we spend in time with Jesus, we need to spend time with God's words. Remember, the woman opened, light a candle. This candle that we need to, to start lightening is the inspired word of God. The woman started to search the scriptures and find out why the whole world, even most of part of the world, is not obeying, keeping the fourth commandment. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Psalms. Let's read in the book of Psalms, chapter 119. 119 division of Psalms. And see there, starting at verse 105, and see that the candle in Bible prophecy symbolizes the word of the living God. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and the light into my path. So candle is producing light. But this light is representing the words of God. We need to start searching the scripture. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Remember the woman light a candle. She starts spending more time with Jesus. She starts spending more time searching the words of God. Listen what the Bible is saying in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So, light in the Bible, candle in the Bible, is pointing to spending time with Jesus, spending time around the word of the living God. But Jesus is more specific, and he wants you and me to study, most importantly, Bible prophecies. Because if we we'll study Bible prophecies, we will understand why most of the world is being deceived and they worship in a false day. They don't worship in the Sabbath day of rest, even the seventh day that God has given from the beginning as a tool, as a weapon against Satan's deception power. Look what the Bible is saying in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. We want to prove from the Bible that light also represents Bible prophecy. 
We need to study Bible prophecy, my friends. Second Peter, chapter 1, and we want to read from here, verse 19. Listen what the Bible is saying. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. When to ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So you see, Bible prophecy is being symbolized with the light. That woman light a candle. She starts spending more time with Jesus, starts searching the scriptures, and especially Bible prophecy. Now, do you know that when Jesus Christ was upon this earth, he admonishes especially to study the book of Daniel. From the, all the books of the Bible, Jesus, he was saying for the people that they will live in these last days that we need to study the book of Daniel. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, and we want to read from here starting at verse 15. The Bible is saying, When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who so readeth, let him understand. So what book of the Bible did Jesus command to read and understand? It is the book of Daniel. Now, if we we'll listen the words of Jesus, if we we'll light our candles, spend more time with Jesus, search the scriptures, then study Bible prophecy, and especially the book of Daniel, we will see clearly why most of the world is not keeping the fourth commandment, but they are keeping a false day of worship that was even given by Satan himself. Because the book of Daniel is saying that one power has an agenda to continue Satan's agenda from heaven, his deceptive power from heaven, and he touched upon the law of God. Listen what the Bible is saying in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, and we want to read from there, verse 25. Listen what the Bible is saying here. Here we are being told about the power that is being spoken in Daniel chapter 7 as being the little horn in Bible prophecy. Now listen, what was the work of this little horn in the past? And it will be his work in the future. The Bible is saying, And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear of the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. Now, do you see that according to this Bible passage, this little horn power that was speaking great words against the Most High God. Who is the Most High God according to our Bible study? This is God the Creator. So we have a power on this earth that is speaking against God's creative power. He is speaking blasphemies against God. He is continuing the same agenda of Lucifer from heaven. And he, listen what verse 25 is saying, and he shall speak great words against the most, high, the most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So persecution is coming from this little horn. And think to change times and laws. So this power with authority from her, not authority from God, she touched upon the law of God. Here we are not speaking about laws of men. Every time when a president is being changed or a government is being changed, laws are being changed again and again. 
But here, this power, with her authority, tried to change the law of God. And even that commandment that is having relationship with time. Let me ask you, what commandment from the Ten Commandments is speaking about a holy time that we need to spend reminding ourselves that God is the true God, the Creator? This is the fourth commandment, my friends. So according to this Bible passage, now we know why most of the people from this world, they are not keeping God's fourth commandment. They are, they are, they are keeping a spurious Sabbath, a false Sabbath, a false day of worship. And who was the one that implemented this false day of worship, even this false commandment? It was a power that tried to take the place of God on this earth. And in our future study, we'll identify very clearly who is that power that put her hand on the law of God, and especially the fourth commandment. Now, as we have mentioned together, my friends, according to this Bible passage, we see clearly that this little horn that is speaking blasphemies against the Most High God is a tool that Satan is using in these last days to deceive people. He is continuing the agenda of Satan in heaven. Let's look again to this bi biblical principle. Go together with me in the book of Isaiah chapter 14. Our message, our message is entitled, Clean the House. Look what the Bible is saying in Isaiah chapter 14. Let's read together from verse, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. And you can put right down in your notes, Romans chapter 10, verse 6. When somebody is saying in his heart, I will ascend unto heaven. That means that I will grab my hand, take Christ from his throne, and put him down, and I will occupy the throne of God. I will receive the worship that is belonging only to God, even the true God, God the Creator. Listen what the Bible is saying. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clown. I will be like the most high. Remember, the little horn power is using great words, even blasphemy, against the most high God, the creator. Satan's agenda in the beginning was to receive the worship that is belonging only to God. Satan's agenda in the end is using this little horn power, this beast power, to receive the worship that is belonging only to the true God, God the Creator. Remember, my friends, that in our previous studies, we have shown clearly that in heaven was a battle. And this battle was over worship, and especially God's commandments in heaven. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 7, that in heaven was a war between Michael and his angels, underline his angels, and Satan or dragon and his angels. And according to the Bible, in the book of Psalms 103, starting from verse 19 to verse 22, God's faithful angels, his angels are the ones that have great joy and satisfaction and listening and obeying God's commandments in heaven. So his angels, the angels of Michael, are those angels that they want to keep God's commandments in heaven. And especially that commandment that is saying that true worship has to be given only to God the Creator. When the Bible is saying that was war in heaven, in Revelation chapter 7, between Michael and his angels, 
and Satan and his angels, we are being told in reality that the war was taking place in heaven between that party that was obeying the commandments of God. Especially that commandment that is saying that true worship has to be given only to the Creator. And those that they wanted a worship without the commandments of God. And without that commandment that says that we need to worship the Creator. In our previous study, I said to you, my friends, there are a group of Christians today who are deceived. Most of them, they are sincere. And they think that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he put aside the Ten Commandments. That means that when Jesus Christ died, according to them, he died to say to Lucifer that he was right at the beginning when he said that we don't need the commandments of God in heaven. But this is not true. This is not the purpose of the plan of salvation. Some people, they say, but no, we can keep the other nine commandments. And the majority of the Christian world today, they have the nine pieces of silver. They have the nine commandments. They do believe that we shall not steal. They do believe that we shall not kill. They do believe that we shall not cover or destroy our families in this corrupting type of relationship. We do believe in the ninth commandments, but the majority of the world have been deceived at the fourth commandment. And when we say that Jesus died on the cross to put the seventh day of rest that was given by God, not after sin, but prior to sin, as a memorial of God's creative power, as a tool against Satan and his deception, Satan that was trying to receive the worship that is belonging to God. When you say that Christ puts aside the Sabbath day of rest, you said in actuality that Jesus came to say to Satan at the beginning that, yes, Lucifer, you are right. Worship has be can be given also, also to the crea creation, to the creature, not only to the creator. This is what you are saying in reality. But this is farther from truth, my friends. The Bible is saying that uh, this power, the little horn power, with authority from himself, even from Satan, he touched the law of God and changed times. This is time and law. And what commandment from the Ten Commandments is dealing with a specific time, a time that we need to put aside only in worship the true God, the Creator. This is the fourth commandment. My friends, let me say to you, after that woman open and light the candle, the next thing that she do after studying the book of Daniel, studying the book of prophecies, then she swept away all the dust, all the garbage that was in that house. Let me ask you this, my friends, and you need to give a clear and an honest answer in your mind. Do you study the Bible? Do you search the scriptures? I have another question for you. Do you study Bible prophecy? Do you study the book of Daniel? Have you seen in the book of Daniel that this little horn power has touched upon the law of the living God? Have you seen from the Bible that this power is continuing the agenda of Satan from heaven? If you don't have this experience, my friends, light your candle. Start from now on with Jesus Christ and he will be more, more than happy to help you because finally that woman find that piece of silver that was lost. But the next step that she do, she swept away the house. She cleaned the floor, all the garbage that was inside that house that was covering that piece of silver. Let me ask you this. If that piece of silver is a symbol of the word of the living God, 
even the fourth commandment. What is covering God's commandments today that the people may not see it clearly? These are the words of men, my friends. These are man-made commandments. These are tradition from made. And people are worshiping in vain, listening the commandments of men. Listen how Jesus Christ puts it in the book of Matthew chapter 15. Listen what Jesus is saying concerning those people who are worshiping, giving heed to the commandments of men. Matthew chapter 15, and we want to read together, starting at verse, starting at verse, mm, let's read from verse 3. Jesus is responding here. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So in Jesus' time, tradition of men was more important than the words of the commandments of God. Listen what the Bible is saying in verse, in verse 6, the second part. The Bible is saying the second part in verse 6. Thus have ye made the commandment of God on, of none effect by your tradition. So this garbage, this dust was covering the commandments of God even in Jesus Christ's days. Look what he is saying in verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. My, my friends, let me ask you this. If you are worshiping in vain, listening the commandments of men, that means that you are, you are spending time in vain. This is useless time. My mother, he, she is, uh, keeps telling me again and again that if we are not worshiping according to the Bible, we are using time in vain in church. In vain. Because we are not worshiping according to the commandments of God. And it's frightening to see that in these last days, people will want to hear more the commandments of men, teachings of men, more than the words of God. Listen how the Bible is putting this in the book of Second Peter chapter 4. We will see this in these last days. Second Timothy chapter 4 and we want to read from there, from verse, from verse 1. My friend, this is the time when we need to clean our houses. This is the time when we need to ask ourselves, I am worshipping myself according to the commandments of God. I am worshipping at my home, in my family, according to the word of the living God. Is my church a church that is obeying a that says the Lord? The inspired word of God that is the Holy Bible? If not, my friends, that means that garbage is covering the precious commandments of God and most especially the fourth commandment, which is the seal of the living God. Listen what the Bible is saying in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I want you to read from here from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So in these last days, people, they will even start paying preachers to tell them what they want to hear. Not the inspired word of God, not the truth for this time. The people, they want that somebody to, to speak Beautiful words, uh, words that they will, they will make us to feel good. The Bible is saying that they will take their ears away from truth and they want to, see, to hear fables, stories. 
okay? And I remember that my mother used to tell me stories and when she wanted me to put me to sleep. Yes, my friends, there are a lot of people who are sleeping in the churches. There are a lot of people who are listening sermons that make you to sleep. But we need to remain awake because Jesus Christ is coming back again. Now, with this thing in mind, let's go back to Luke chapter 15 and we want to read again verse 8 and 9. I hope that this Bible study has been a blessing to you and has been a blessing for me. Listen what the Bible is saying in verse 8 and 9. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. Now, and when she hath found it, she calleth her friends. And I want you to underline her friends and her neighbors together saying. So in actuality, what we are reading, after this woman, this church, found the commandment that was lost, even the fourth commandment, now she has a mission. She is going to her neighbors. She, going, she is going to the other woman friends. And she said, rejoice with me. For I have found the piece of silver that was lost. Now, do you remember what we have studied at the beginning? We have studied and found out that the woman in Bible prophecy is a symbol of a church. That means that the mandate of the true church of God is to take the fourth commandment, the message of true worship, even the worship of God the Creator, and we need to go to the other women around us. These are symbolizing churches that they don't know about the message that we need to keep the commandments of God. And we need to go to them. Now listen very carefully. That woman didn't went with the, nine, the other nine pieces of silver. No, my friends. The other pieces of silver remained at home. She has to present the present truth. What was that present truth? It was that fourth commandment that was lost. She has taken that piece of silver and now she is going to the other woman around her, neighbors, and she is saying, rejoice with me. This is the commandment the mandate of the church of God. We need to spread this message that the law of God has been changed and the people of the world are worshiping the false day of worship that was not given by God, but was given by Satan himself because Satan is behind this false agenda of the beast. Rejoice with me. Let's search the scripture, dear churches around me, and see why is the reason why so many people are deceived in this false worship? This is the reason, my friends, that in the book of Revelation chapter 14, as we are trying to close this message with the title, Clean the House, this is the reason that in the book of Revelation chapter 14, when we read about the three angels' message, this is the final message that is going to be preached in these last days, we see again words that we find in the book of Exodus. Listen what the Bible is saying in verse 6. The Bible is saying here, listen the mission of the church of God. Listen the, the mission of that woman that understood that we need to keep all ten commandments. Listen what the Bible is saying. Here, Revelation 14, and we want to read starting at verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him. Now listen very carefully. Worship Him that made heaven, earth, the sea, 
and the fountains of water. If you can put something here in your Bible and go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, you will see that the same words are being used. Is God is trying to say, remember that I am the true one, the true God, God the creator. Remember that I have given to you from the beginning an instrument that may protect you from the deceptive power of Satan. That was the day, the seventh day, the day of rest that was blessed by God from the beginning. Oh, my friends, this is the message that has to go into the entire world. And only those that they will keep the Ten Commandments, all of them, especially the Fourth Commandment, they will be protected when the, this final deception that is being brought by Satan through his agent, the beast in these last days. Look what the Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. The Bible is saying in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, the Bible is saying, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and its image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So two groups in the last days. Those who worship God, the Creator, and those who worship the beast, whosoever this beast is, in our future study, we will make this Bible topic clear. And you will be amazed, my dear friends, to see how almost the whole world is under the deception of this beast power, the angel of Satan. Now, the Bible is saying that this beast wants the worship that is only belonging to God. That means that this beast is taking the place of God on this earth. And we have found in Revelation 13, starting at verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, that it was the dragon that gave power, seat, and authority to this beast. What is our protection? Listen about about this most important topic, we want to look in verse, in verse 10. What punishment they will receive those who will worship the beast. The same shall drink to the, of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, and in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Now listen. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest. Underline this. They have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receive the mark of his name. Those who will receive the mark of the beast, who are worshiping the beast, they don't have rest. That means... That those who will go against the beast, they don't want to worship the beast, they have the rest. What rest? Listen what rest in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. My friends, our shield, our anchor in this last day final battle is to obey the commandments of the living God. The mark of the beast is going against the commandments of God and especially, now listen, especially that commandment that is able to give us rest. Even Jehovah's rest. Even the rest of God the creator. Where we find this rest in the ten commandments, this is the fourth commandment. It is very clearly because if the beast will ask people to worship her, that means that the commandments of God will be attacked, and especially the fourth commandment. Because if the people, they will understand the fourth commandment, the deception is over. Because that fourth commandment is a memorial from God 
that is saying that true worship has to be given only, only to God the Creator. My friends, I hope that this Bible study has been a blessing to you. Jesus is coming back again. And I want you to think at your life. I want to reason with yourself and ask yourself, is that battle that started in heaven moved upon this earth? The answer is yes. The Bible is the inspired word of God. It is the only book that is able to tell us that the last battle between good and evil, it is between those who will obey the commandments of God, even the fourth commandment, and even between those that they will reject the commandments of God. May God help you. May God help me to be on the winning side because God will have a people that you will say, Revelation 14, 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. May God help us. Amen.